Hello everybody, this is Tim once again on my review for the film The Conjuring, which is a really good film. I really enjoyed this film. I don't think it's a horror classic by any means, and I don't think it's a great film, but it's a really good one. It's directed by James Wan, who also directed Insidious, which is another film I like, and I like James Wan. But to basically jump into the story here, I only recognize three actors from this film. Patrick Wilson, who's also in Insidious. Uh, his wife, I believe, is the mom from a fucking horror film, The Orphan, which is another film I enjoy. And the mom on here, the family that is uh, being haunted, I think she's played in the remake of The Haunting, which is a film I despise. It almost makes me doesn't want to care what happens to her, well, almost. But to jump right into the film here, uh, you know, at the beginning, you got Patrick Wilson and his wife talking about, they're like paranormal investigators, you got this story about this doll that this demon was using as a conduit and lying to this, uh, lying to these women so it can try to like possess one of them, it uses a, um, uses a doll to like creep them out and shit, and at first they think it's a ghost so they say it's okay for it to possess the doll, they basically tell it to possess the doll, say it's okay, but I guess that's kind of like giving it permission to come into their uh, apartment or whatever and try to possess him. I believe it's an apartment anyway. And Patrick Wilson, his wife, basically showed up, kicked the demon's ass, sent it packing, basically. I'm not sure if they say they had an exorcism, exorcism performed on the doll or something. I'm not for sure, but I was kind of zoned out during that part, but it's entertaining enough. It's just a brief monologue. But to be honest, the doll is, like, creepier than anything in this film, and I would rather have seen a movie about it than uh, the actual film we get. But supposedly this film is based on a true story. I'll take that with a grain of salt if I was you. But anyway, let's jump into this film here. Uh, the actual setup for the film here is that there's a family that moves into this house. Of course, it's haunted. You get basic haunting shit here. Nothing. This film is not breaking any new grounds, but it's entertaining. <coughs> but uh, jump into the film here. Sorry, I've had a bit of cold. Uh, a bit of a cold uh, as of late. Huh? Allergies. Well, allergies acting up anyway. But anyway, let's jump into this fucker here. Uh, they wake up next morning. The dog didn't want to come in the house. The dog's dead. Basic setup here. Reminds me of a whole lot of films I've seen a thousand times. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. For what this film is, for a haunted house film that turns into a slight exorcism film, it plays it up really well. Um, so the dog's dead. They're hanging out in the house. As for scares and shit, they, the couple... I don't recognize the dad from anywhere. Uh, they got like four daughters in this film. I don't recognize any of them. They kind of all merge together and I really can't even tell them apart because they're all girls <laughs> with long hair. But anyway, uh, you get decent scares in this film. Different, decent, well, decent creepy shit. Uh, one, like the two daughters will be asleep. One of them keeps getting their leg yanked or whatever. Uh, it's decent and effective and all at once the entity would just like yank her like halfway down the bed. She's like, thinks it's her sister and she's like, stop or whatever, but it's the entity. She wakes up, looks around, it's not her sister. Uh, she was looking under the bed, decent scene here. You think something's going to like jump out at her when she raises back up. She looks under the bed, sees the door like moving. She raises back up, wakes her sister up. Her sister goes over there, check it out. Door's moving and shit. And, uh, she's the only one that can see the entity. I don't even think the audience can see it from what I remember. We're not able to see it either. But all once you get the door slamming, it's a decent, effective scene. Nothing breaking any new ground here. Most of this film has got jump scares in it, but they're played well. I don't hate, I hate jump scares, but normally, well, normally I hate them unless they're paced right and played good. And in this film, they're done, well, good. <laughs> but uh, the family wakes up and runs up there, and they basically tell her there's nothing there. Get over it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Uh, kind of, well, they don't really say shut the fuck up, but they might as well because they're just like, there's nothing in this house, just get over it, suck it up. Uh, the fa the kids in this film play a game where they like blindfold each other and try to find people who's like clapping or something like that. One of them will clap and they'll try to like find them from the claps, you know, reacting to the noise. Hide and clap or something like that. I guess it was a popular game in the 70s. I never knew it existed until now, but anyway. So, uh... In the movie, the mom is, like, playing hide and clap with one of the kids, and the entity's, like, fucking with her and clapping and shit, and she starts getting drawn closer to it, and the little girl jumps in. You get a decent jump scare here. It's pretty neat. It's pretty effective. Nothing I hadn't seen before. I've seen similar shit to this, but it plays it up well here. Um, the, the entity's, like, fucking with them in the house constantly. It's entertaining. Oh, uh, no. One of the little girls has, like, a music box. I guess it's the conduit for the entity to come through. Through the film, you think, I, I believe you're supposed to think it's going to possess the little girl, but it's actually possessing the mom. Every morning she wakes up with bruises and shit on her, uh, where the entity has been like feeding off of her. And you get a scene later in the film that's a decent scare where the entity like vomits into her mouth or something like that, like ectoplasm or some shit, so it possesses her. It's interesting. Uh, but, uh, uh, fucking, I almost blanked out there for a minute. Back to the story here. Uh, you got the family living in the house and shit starts getting worse and worse. Then one night the mom wakes up and fucking pictures fall off the side of the wall and a big loud noise. 
I don't know what else in the house woke up. I have no idea because it's pretty fucking loud. I think the father is gone this time. She goes into the basement like a genius. Um, <laughs> she's down in the basement, gets scared, runs back up, gets ready to leave. The fucking door slams in front of her. She falls backwards down the steps. Uh, and she makes it back up the steps. And you get a really creepy scene here. Probably the best in the film. And the, you can hear the spirit or entity or whatever saying you want to play hide and clap. And then two hands come out of the back of the shadows and fucking clap like right next to her. It's effective and, and scary. Um, the mom screaming her head off and then back in the daughter's room. She's like a fucking sitting there just chilling <laughs> while sleeping. You got one kid in here who sleepwalks like all the time, nonstop. I'm not sure which one it is, but she keeps sleepwalking and banging her head in front of the, and hitting her head against this shitty ass fucking dresser. <coughs> but, uh, <coughs> huh, sorry, more fucking coughing. I've been coughing a lot as of late because of my fucking allergies. Season changing and shit. But, uh, she keeps just bangs her head against this fucking shitty ass dresser all the time and stuff, and it's mildly entertaining. Uh, like I said, I can't even really tell the daughters apart. But, uh, one of the daughter, one of the daughters gets up and the entity is like on top of the dresser and like leaps at her. Once you actually see the entity, or at least one of the entities, there's multiple ghosts in this movie, I believe, and it kind of reminds me too much of Insidious a little bit. Um, but when you actually actually see it, it's just like a long a person with long hair or something. It kind of loses the scare factor there. It leaps on them, and the father shows up, gets the mom out of the basement, basically he runs up there, and they see the little girl struggling, but there's nothing there. Entertaining scene, decent. And so finally after that, they said, fuck this shit, let's hire Patrick Wilson and his wife to run whatever this is out of here. <laughs> Patrick Wilson and his wife discover that the, in the main entity or whatever is actually a uh, ghost of some like witch who was like a Satan worshiper who like sacrificed her own kid to pr prove her devotion to Satan or some shit like that. <laughs> but they want to set up the house and uh, rig it with cameras and shit, basically like an episode of Ghost Hunters, and uh, <laughs> make sure that the house is possessed so they can get evidence to get the Vatican and perform an exorcism on it, even though they get the evidence that the Vatican just... Well, just doesn't want to do it anyway because I guess they require even more proof as they do in every film. But anyway, they're getting evidence and shit, and you get some decent scenes. They got a cop, and they got another guy there with them. I don't know if he's Korean or Chinese, but he's there with them. He's fine. Uh, the cop that's there with them, he's okay. You don't really need him. Uh, but uh, but he's there with them, and you get a creepy scene where he's like wandering to the house, and there's this woman with cut wrist saying, "Look what she made me do," or whatever. And, he actually follows her. Why? I don't know. I'd probably get the fuck out of there after that. But she disappears. Not once she jumps out in front of him and screams it in his face. Look what she made me do. <laughs> it's an entertaining scene. Decent little jump scare there. Like I said, most of this film relies on jump scares and creepy scares like that. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Paranormal Activity. Um, but uh, he gets scared by that. Everybody runs in there. No one dies in this film, so don't expect the death like whatsoever. So that's what you're expecting in the film. You'd be disappointed. But they play it up to where you think that someone might die, but they they don't. Um, so uh, the cop gets scared. They rigging up cameras and shit, and you get a scene where uh, one of the little the uh, child who sleepwalks. I think her name is April. I could be wrong. She sleepwalks. She fucking heads up to upstairs where that shitty ass dresser is. Uh, uh, Patrick Wilson's wife is listening in. She can hear a voice up there talking to her, telling her where to go. She goes inside the dresser, and Patrick Wilson and the father go up there to try to find her. She's in, like, behind, inside the dresser. You can pull the wood back. There's, like, this little uh, crawl space back there. And back there is where the music box, like, was or came from. And Patrick Wilson's wife gets in there. She fucking falls through the floor, entertaining the ac little action scene there. She lands in the basement. Uh, there's a ghost down in there. You get a decent little scare. Here. She says, look what she made me do again. Um, but, uh, you get a little jump scare, there's a hanging woman there, um, then, uh, Patrick Wilson's wife gets the fuck out of there, loses her necklace that belonged to her daughter that she gave her, um, yeah, Patrick Wilson and his wife in this film have a daughter who's kind of getting haunted by the entity, I never, exp the entity's not really, like, trying to kill him, or kill, or kill her or anything like that, it's just trying to fuck with him, so it can kind of, like, scare him off, because it doesn't like him, basically, because <laughs> so they're trying to help the family, but, uh, you get a creepy scene, <coughs> Sorry again, more fucking allergies, but uh, you can have a creepy scene in the film where uh, Patrick Wilson's daughter is locked in this room and all the lights are flickering on and off, and uh, and uh, the doll that was in the beginning of the film is sitting there in a rocking chair with uh, with uh, the entity or whatever, like rocking back and forth with it. It's a decent little creepy scene. Patrick Wilson and his wife show up there, uh, 
to try to well Patrick Wilson's wife is like psychic and she can detect shit from objects and stuff and just detect when like shit's going down and they show up there and Patrick Wilson gets the door open and saves his daughter the fucking rocking chair comes flying at Patrick Wilson he dodges it uh, entertaining scene uh, earlier in the film or uh, well earlier in the film I, before that I believe um, you get a scene where Patrick Wilson's wife is looking in the water and seeing her daughter float from her dead uh, they call up and check on their daughter and she's fine it was just kind of a warning from the entity fucking with them it's entertaining <laughs> Sorry once again. I hope I'll be over these fucking allergies by the time the next video is up, which will be Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. But to jump into the back to the story here, she loses her necklace that she had. She makes it back upstairs. They take the evidence to the Vatican. The Vatican says, "Well, they take the evidence to the priest, and he says the Vatican's, you know, he'll try, but you know how they are in films. <laughs> they don't want to do an exorcism no matter what, basically." But um, so after that the Fucking Patrick Wilson's wife discovers what's going on, that the entity is possessing the mob so, so that she'll kill one of the kids, and that the entity has actually been possessing the mobs of these families, like, down the, like, through history, whoever had just happened to be unlucky enough to live here, and to, to kill their kids or whatever, for sacrifices, I guess, and she concludes that the mom is possessed or whatever, and she tells the family about it, and they go and stay in a hotel, and the dad just leaves and leaves her there with the kids, even, I, I thought that was kind of stupid. Even though Patrick Wilson's wife, I'm pretty sure, told him that that's what was happening, but whatever. Okay, so the mom kidnaps two of the kids, takes them back to the house. Patrick Wilson's wife kind of senses this shit. And uh, she uh, she and Patrick Wilson and the father of the family, they head back to the house to try to stop her from killing one of them. She's going to stab one of them with a pair of scissors. They stop her. She makes it back out to the vehicle. You get a bunch of CGI birds like flying around. Uh, it's okay. Uh, they're in the house. Um, uh, trying to perform an exorcism on her. Well, they try to get her out of the house, but she starts dying because the entity's killing her because they won't let him take her out of the house. So they have to perform the exorcism right there. So Patrick Wilson has to do it. He's as good as any guy, I guess, to do it. Uh, he has to perform the exorcism. He's doing it right, I guess, because he's winning. Uh, they put her in like a sack and tie her up to a chair. You get some, we get more theatrical stuff here. It kind of loses the creep factor. Like I said, with all the bird stuff lying around, kind of makes me think of the birds. That makes it get a little, gets a little silly with that shit. But uh, they tie her up to the chair. They got the sack over. She starts like bleeding blood through the sack or whatever, and he's like demanding that the entity to like show itself. And it's like some ugly old woman who like comes to the bag or whatever, um, or old looking woman, and it's entertaining. And then you get some decent shit like the chair flips upside down and hangs upright or whatever, and then falls back down. It's a decent, entertaining scene, but nothing I haven't seen before in other exorcism films. Uh, Patrick Wilson's doing the exorcism on her and stuff, and she gets loose. Well, before that, she, like, bites the cop on the side of the neck. Nothing fatal or anything. Like I said, nobody dies in this film. Um, so, uh, they're performing the exorcism on her. It seems to be working. Uh, the other daughter that, uh, the mom brought there is missing. The, uh, the guy who was working with Patrick Wilson, I'm not sure if he's Korean or Chinese. I don't, I'm not for sure. He finds, uh, the other daughter underneath the floor, underneath the table, and... Uh, the mom hears it uh, after she manages to get loose out of the chair, takes off running to go kill the other daughter. Earlier in this film, there is a scene where Patrick Wilson's wife, like I said, can detect stuff and see memories and shit where she picks up a photo of them on the... And just it's like a happy memory of them on the beach or whatever. But anyway, back to the film here. Of course, that comes into play here at the final. Um, she gets ready to kill the other daughter. Patrick Wilson is like grabbing her, trying to stop her. And then Patrick Wilson's wife sticks her hand down in the hole, puts her hand on her head and fucking... Gets her to remember that day on the beach, the happy day. <laughs> and she kind of fights the entity off and like pukes it up and ectoplasm or ghost sperm or whatever comes out of her entertaining scene. Uh, and that's pretty much a cue in the movie. The family is safe and the entity is gone and Patrick Wilson and his wife save the day. <laughs> and like I, uh, they have a little room, like, uh, like I've said in this film, or I believe I've said it already, that in this film that they have a, a little room where they keep all like the objects or, uh, no, I haven't said it yet, I don't think. They got a little, well, they have a little room in this film where they keep all the objects that are like conduits and shit that these ghosts and demons have used. And it kind of reminds me of Friday 13th, the TV series. And to be honest, I'm more entertained by Patrick Wilson's wife and him than I am the actual family in this film. I wish they'd make like a spinoff about just about them, but, but whatever. Uh, I like their characters better than the, the family in this film. But uh, back to the film here. That's pretty much cue in the movie. We get like a little music. The, they take the, Patrick Wilson takes the music box, puts it in his room with all the other stuff. It kind of just like lines up a little bit for a second. One last little teasy scare for the audience. It's just for the audience. It doesn't leave room for a sequel or open for a sequel or anything. It's pretty much just over. 
<coughs> one last cough too before I end this review. <laughs> but that's it's pretty much just over after that. That's one thing I like about this film. It doesn't open or, or open or leave an opening for a fucking sequel, which I enjoy. A lot of horror franchises don't really need to be franchises. Children of the Corn comes to mind. Uh, this is a really good film. Like I said, I give it four stars out of a possible four. It's a really good movie. I don't think it's a great movie. I'd kind of give it like a low four stars uh, because it's just been there and done that for me, and the ending gets more theatrical and kind of takes away from the scare factor. But it's a really good movie, and I definitely recommend like buying it when I am going to buy it when I get a chance. But uh, like I said, this is a really good movie. It's definitely worth checking out. And if you're a fan of like haunted house movies and possession films, you're going, you're probably gonna love it. Uh, as for me, haunted house films have kind of been done to death. There's not really much more you can do with it. And as for as for possession films, they've been done fucking the hell and back. And there's not really anything more you can do with that kind of story. It's gonna take like a real good reinvention for that shit to keep it going. But uh, to end this review, this is a really good movie. Not a great movie. Not a horror classic. Uh, it kind of feels like Ben and I have done that, but it's good enough for a, a watch, and I well for a buy actually. If you're a horror fan, I definitely recommend checking it out and buying it. Uh, especially buy it if you're a haunted house fan or a fan of possession films. But to end this review, it's a four star film out of four. I really like this film. I can't say I love it, but I really do like it a lot. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing Insidious 2 in theaters when I get a chance. So I'll see you guys again with another review, and I hope you have a good day.